Thank you, Chairman Raymond, Vice Chair Frank, and members. As you all know, Speaker Strauss appointed several of us to a foster care work group where we were asked to consider reform measures in the current foster care system after reports of delinquent cases and child fatalities due to abuse and or neglect. Specifically, reform efforts have focused on organizational issues and improving outcomes for children in the foster care system. On the organizational side, Child Protective Services, as you all are aware, have suffered from high turnover rates, heavy caseloads, and low caseworker salaries. On the other hand, children in the foster care system have been abused and neglected by previous caregivers, and many of these children have not been successful in finding permanent homes. Children can be traumatized further when they are sent farther away from their community and or extended family into an unfamiliar environment. Outcomes for children are better if they can be placed in kinship care with family members or close friends they are familiar with. The 90% of children who live apart from their parents in informal kinship care arrangements do not receive the same support as children involved with the state, although they are often in similar situations of financial, social, and emotional distress. Often these kinship caregivers would like to care for the child or children, but cannot due to the large financial burden. The Texas Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, also known as TANF program, is a support service for Texas families. The purpose of TANF is to provide financial and medical assistance to needy dependent children and the parent or relatives with whom they are living. Currently, only caregivers that are grandparents of the dependent child or children and are at least 45 years of age or older qualify for a one-time $1,000 payment. House Bill 132 extends the ability to receive this one-time $1,000 payment to caregivers that are 25 years and older and are the aunt, uncle, uncle sister, or brother of the dependent child. It also qualifies the care, these caregivers to be the protective payees, which will allow them to apply for other benefits available for the child or children. Members, this is a companion to Senate Bill 212, authored by Senator Jose Menendez. In order to be qualified for this one-time TANF payment, the caregiver must comply with the income and asset limits. Those include an income limit at or below 200% of the federal poverty level, asset limit not to exceed $1,000 cash, total vehicle worth cannot exceed $4,650. If HB 132 passes, it will allow our kinship families the ability to provide the child or children with the most basic needs for, for, for survival, such as food, clothing, housing, uh, transportation, phone, laundry, supplies for the home, medical supplies not paid for by Medicaid, along with other basic needs. Members, it's very important to note that the LBB has given this bill a $0 fiscal note because it is assumed the number of new recipients would be small and any cost to implement the provisions of the bill can be absorbed within available resources. HB4, um, if passed, which we all voted on, will help alleviate the financial struggles for some of our kinship families. However, under this bill, allowing the one-time TANF application process to be opened up to more kinship caretakers will help alleviate the additional costs associated with bringing in a new child that I just mentioned. Members, I would like to now ask for your support on this important legislation. I am, I am happy to answer any questions, and I also reserve the right to close. <laughs> 